I'm going to give you a heads up of how I look at a potential project before committing to any architects and engineers fees. Back of an envelope style using my trade chunks method. We use an attic extension as an example and the cool thing about attic extensions are that it's the same set of requirements regardless of the age and type of the attic meaning it's easier to estimate the cost for you the self builder since it's a set of commonly used ingredients as I call it. They're all usually approximately the same floor area that's 25 to 45 square meters. Number two they usually require similar structural upgrades for example to strengthen the floor. Uh, number three making a downstairs room smaller by taking down a wall then cutting a hole in the ceiling and adding a trimmer beams to make an opening for a stair then adding a new staircase, creating new insulation within the roof envelope, creating roof ventilation, cutting into the roof for either dormer windows or roof lights, extending the heating, adding one or two electrical circuits, a ring main for sockets and a radio for lighting and you'll need a set of design drawings showing before and after to comply with either permitted development or planning permission. Then you'll need a building warrant which means probably an architect and definitely a structural engineer certificate but enough of that because I just wanted to give you the basics and show you how I do it before any drawings are done for a simple example. So stick with me and you can pick out the bits you need before committing to getting architects and engineers involved so you are more in control of how you are spending your own money. Let's do ballpark costs in the order of what they would happen on a job. So we'll always start with the strip out and the demolitions downstairs first we need to allow for making space for the attic stairs and preparing the roof loft space. Demolitions usually involve making an existing bedroom smaller or taking over a disused store. Then demolishing a wall and building a new wall in a position to make the hall a little bigger, big enough to fit the stair in. We'll also need to cut a hole in the floor for the stair and we will also have to allow for the skips outside. Probably two, possibly three in total for an attic conversion. And we'll also need some acro props and strong boys for supporting the floor and timbers whilst we do the demolitions and strip out of the old attic. And you can see my other videos here on demolitions about how to do them safely and how to use these props. Now this is the messy bit but it's also pretty straightforward. I will allow a maximum of two weeks to get this done which includes the time to set the site up and make it safe and I'll imagine that two guys are going to be doing that. So we've got this much for the labour, this much for the skips and the props. Now for the strengthening of the floor and rafters, most of the time I'm doubling up the floor joists, introducing struts around the eaves and raising the roof ties. For trusses in modern roofs, it's a similar thing for the floors, doubling up, but I'm adding uh, roof purlins where the struts have been removed. And for the materials, you'll have fixing bolts, new timber for the joists and studs. I'll allow three weeks, probably one skilled and one labourer. This much for labour and this much for materials. With the floor strengthened and ties and struts in place, you need to get the roofer in to form the openings. If you're just using roof lights, your roofer will do it all including cutting and installing the roof lights. He'll also install all your roof vents and your penetrations for things like extract fans and soil pipes. Some work off roof battens, some insist on scaffolding. I will allow this much labour which will include the vents and the flashings and they will just reuse your existing slates or tiles. Roofing contractors have high annual turnovers and are VAT registered so that figure includes VAT. Now for a traditional slate or tile roof in an older property, there's more work cutting and sourcing the tiles, so I'll add another £1,200. If you've got dormers, you'll need a joiner to form them, uh, working alongside the roofer. We call this attendance time, and I would say it's probably two days work, and I'll add this much to the roofer's price for that. We also need to include for the price of the windows, let's say we have two tilt and turn casements to the dormers, this much each and one Velux, say this much, so three windows in total. And talking of joiners with the roof lights or dormers formed, time to get all the insulation in and the first fix framing, that's partitions, noggings, ceilings, framing and cutting and fitting all the insulation. And this is the important bit which can make or break your project and 
and your happiness. Ventilation, vapour barrier, cold bridging and new values is the bit that needs a lot of supervision and quality control to avoid the shortcuts. I've gone over this in a lot of detail here and here so check those links out and I'll expect at least four weeks for this joinery stage maybe allow six actually so this much for labour now uh, prepare for a shop for the insulation when you try to buy it it will be around this much and timber and fixings probably another £1,000 electrician can come in now and do their first fix so running cables for the ring main smoke detection and a new lighting radio and see my video here if you want a bit more understanding of that stuff and see what you can and can't do yourself. Now assuming your consumer unit is up to modern standards and has two spare points on the bar for two new RCBOs, the electrician will be in and out in a day or two. I'll expect this much plus another few hundred for the hassle factor of getting the cable routes from the downstairs consumer unit up into the attic. Now these electricians will be back to do the second fix after the plaster has been in and which I'll come to in a minute. They will be there for a day and a half sockets installed, switches and lights and they'll test the system and give you a certificate which you'll need later for your completion certificate. The plumber will run some flow and return pipes within the floors and form tails for the radiators to connect with and they'll also be back to do the second fix after the plaster a bit like the electrician. They'll be there for a day, a day and a half, and they'll be this much, including the radiators, and they'll also test the heating system for flow rate throughout the house, and they'll also test the pressure, probably test the gas at the same time. Time for chipboard flooring, glued and screwed, plasterboard sheets screwed into the stud work, both for the walls and the ceilings, say three new doors and frames fitted. We'll say that's two weeks, two guys. Let's say this much for labor and this much for the doors, the chipboard, the fixings and the plasterboard. Time for the plaster to come in and skim with bonding plaster into the junction with the existing house and skim elsewhere. I would imagine that will be this much based usually on either a square meter rate or they count the number of sheets of plasterboard and you'll need to allow a week or two depending on the time of year to dry it out. Now we've already mentioned the electrician and plumber second fix so time for the stair which I always try to keep till the end to avoid it getting damaged. There are likely two types of stair you will be choosing between. The first is a dog leg where you have a half landing and you turn around 180 degrees and then there's a straight flight. The straight flight is slightly cheaper and I will usually allow around this much for a dog leg. You can also consider winders on the landing if headroom is an issue. Now I know you can get these stairs off the shelf for a lot less but trust me it is always a false economy and what you end up with involves a load of faffing about to make it fit. So it's much better to get a bespoke stair designed and manufacturers which fits exactly to the requirements that you need for your project. And let me know in the comments if you want me to show you how I design, size, make and assemble these stairs. Now the joiner will install this along with the skirtings, the architraves, ironmongery and any other second fix items and so approximately this much for labour. Materials, thinking MDF skirtings and architraves, ironmongery and what have you. And then you've got your mist coat, your decoration and all the other bits and pieces you'll need to add blinds, hardwood floors. But I'm just going through everything for the bare essentials to your inner shell here and if you're a keen self builder you should be able to do all of the first fix work yourself that's downs joinery and insulation electrical cable runs and plumbing first fix and if you're confident there's nothing stopping you doing a second fix joinery as well just don't go near it if you're not neat because it will bug you staring at the imperfections for years to come if you get joiners to come in and do the second fix you're pretty much guaranteed to get a perfect finish don't forget your electrician will need to come around and give you your certificate and your plumber will probably need to check your gas if you're altering the heating. And that's the back of my envelope cost. It's taken me just 10 minutes or so for more bedrooms and for things like en suites and stores. I'll just scribble it out the same as I've done above. You'll also need to allow for paying your council for planning permission. Probably about this much and building regulations approval, let's say this much, based usually on the cost of the work. And you can treat this like an initial recipe for your own attic project before you go and commit to getting your architect or engineers appointed so you can 
understand your budget better. For these professional fees, percent of the construction cost for the architect, and give them your sketch ideas and maybe you want to share with them the scribbles we've just done on our envelope here to get their opinion. Maybe around this much for the engineer and once you've got the detailed drawings back from them, you can go back to the cost and do it in a much more detailed bottom-up way using my detailed costing system and templates like I explain in this video here. If you found this useful, please help my channel with a thumbs up. It really does help. See you soon.